Hey guys, so we're bringing it back to basics today. We're just going to be talking about subdivisions and then we're going to use what we've learned from just using the snare drum and we're going to apply it to grooves and building grooves that sound more interesting than what they usually would. So we're going to be having a click track on at 75 BPM through all these exercises. Um, we're playing in 4-4, four, four, so there's four beats in one bar and it'll make more sense when I show it to you. So our first subdivision that we're going to be learning is quarter notes. They're called quarter notes because there's four notes in a bar, just like how you quarter a pie. Four pieces of pie when you quarter a pie. Same thing. There we go. We count that as one, two, three, four. Just because it's four, four, four notes in the bar. We're playing, as you can tell, we're playing on every single click that's in our click track. So that, that's our one bar. One, two, three, four. One note, and it's going to last the same. So now, <clears throat> all on the snare drum still, alternating hands, right, left, right, left, or if you're left-handed, left, right, left, right. We're now going to go on to eighth notes. Eighth notes, self-explanatory again, eight notes in a bar. So we're just doubling the amount, and we count this as one and two and three and four and and that's how we're going to count it through the bar so as we were just playing one two three four now we're going to be playing one and two and three and four and there you go i hope you can hear the click it's click then click then click then click in, and that's how it goes. Eight notes. Sixteenth notes. Next one. Sixteenth notes. Um, I'm sure you can hit by now. Sixteen notes in a bar. You might refer to these as semiquavers as well. It's the same as the other one. The English used to have a term for all of these, and they used to. So the quarter note over in England, we used to. It's changed a lot now. Like we've we've all gone to the American way of using. But it used to be quarter note used to be called a crotchet. Eighth note was a quaver, and sixteenth notes were semi-quavers. As you can tell, I think a lot of people have just gone to the American way because it's easier. Sixteenth notes, we know there's sixteen notes in a bar. Here we go. There you go, that's our sixteenth notes. And we count 16th notes as 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. So 1 E and a. We've still got the and, so 1 and 2 and 3, like our 8th notes. Um, but 16th notes, yeah, that's just how we count it. 1 E and a, 2 E and a. Next thing to do is try and link them together. So we've got our quarter notes, 8th notes, 16th notes. Try and get a bar of each linked up. Always alternating hands at the minute. There you go. So we went from quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, just like that. Work on that if you haven't got it. If you need to make it slower, make it slower because as soon as you get to the sixteenth notes, you can hear not. It doesn't speed up because obviously you can hear the click track. It's staying exactly the same. But as you're fitting more notes into the bar, it's going to get harder and harder at higher tempos. Even if the quarter notes sound really slow, which they will, because you're only playing on every single beat of whatever tempo you're playing at. When you get up to the 16th notes, um, yeah, it gets faster and faster. Next thing, because we, we, we're applying all of these to grooves, that's our main goal here, building grooves. It's just, if you understand the subdivisions, you, you, the sky's the limit. These are only three as well, and with this three, you can make most drum patterns that are written in pop songs and things like that. Yeah, so next thing is playing them all on one hand, because these subdivisions at the minute, just for this 15 minutes, we're just going to be playing it with our hi-hat hand. So if you're left-handed and you play your hi-hat with your left hand, use your left hand for this. If you're right-handed, use your right hand. And we're just doing the same thing, but instead of alternating hands, we're going to just do it on the one hand. It's important to know, actually, when we get up to 16th notes, if your one hand speed isn't quick enough, you can still alternate, because people do that in grooves all the time and beats like that, so it's absolutely fine. I'll do two times around. I'll do one right hand and then the next 16th notes on um, 
by Pasco. There you go, so that's our snare drum exercise. That's our quarter notes, our eighth note, eighth note, and sixteenth notes, all on the snare drum. One hand, two hands. Now I'm just going to show you how to apply it to a groove. We play groove before, we've got our bass drum always on the one and three, and our snare drum on the two and four, and it's going to stay the same throughout this exercise as I'm showing you. Towards the end, we might change it around a bit depending on how much time we have. But at the minute, bass drum one and three, snare drum two and four, so as we're going one and two and three and four and, and our right hand is doing exactly the same as what we just did in that one-handed exercise it's just we're bringing it now up to the hi-hat to make a groove and build it start to build these patterns so if i was going to play it as a groove that's exact same exercise that i just did on the snare drum one two three and then going through a bar of each it was like has a bar of each and I played the 16th notes second time round open handed which I would advise at this early on because if you get up to speed hard on one hand practice that we do that in a different lesson though but at the minute it's quite good to get that open handed single stroke rolls right left right left right left right left and playing in groove so once we have all them the sky's the limit join them up just like we did the snare drum exercise one bar of each, like I just did, and then just mix them together as in any way you want. And I'll just show you an example now. So there you go, that is the basis of everything we do in drums. It's all subdivisions in a bar. If you learn them, then you can start putting snare drums and bass drums in different places that I'm gonna to touch on in just a second. We still know that in our bar is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, and that's your world if you're in four four. You can put anything wherever you want as long as it's in time with the click, whatever tempo you're at, and as long as it's on one of them notes, just using these three subdivisions. So further on we can talk about triplets and 16th note triplets and things like that, five, sevens, eights, anything like that. But they all fit within, if you're playing in 4-4, four, they all fit in that part. One, two, three, four. Everything's got to be in that section. If that's your time signature, keep it between that. And we can start to experiment all by yourself. It doesn't matter where you put them, now we know we have our quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. We know our quarter notes are one, two, three, four. Eighth notes are one and two and three and four and. And our sixteenth notes are one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. You can start to experiment. They all last the same amount of time in the bar, but you can now start to think about your kick drum and your snare drum placement. If we're playing a groove like this with our open right, left, right, left, the 16th notes. We can now start to experiment. What, what else can we do? We can put kick drums on the E's. And we can put snare drums on the uhs of the one E and a. Uh, and you can then just start to experiment, move your hands around. Obviously this takes a lot of time. Practice slow. That's the most important thing to get out of this. You, the slower you go, the better it's going to be. 75 is slow, you can go as slow as 60 is what's recommended, especially that snare drum exercise at the beginning. beginning. The slower you can get that. And you actually realize the slower you go, the harder it gets. So if I just turn this down to 60 now, 
you'll hear how hard it gets because you've got to be counting in between. When I'm counting along to 60, I count the I count the 16th note. I count them in between. So if I was counting along to this, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, just because there's so much space in between. Even if I'm just playing, boom, ah, boom, ah, I'm still counting one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a and so on and so on. So that's a really good exercise to get into, especially yeah, playing slow, you'll just be able to hear where things land and it's all about accuracy. Like that snare drum ex exercise at the beginning, it's all about accuracy. You need to be hitting, if you're leading with your right hand, always landing down with a click with your right hand. And if you're leading with your left, always landing a click with your left hand. So moving on, we're now gonna put some bass drums and snare drums in different locations. And we're going to be using eighth note subdivision as we're going to be playing along. So we've got, we know what our eighth notes are. They're one and two and three and four and, and the groove sounds like this. One and two and three and four and, kick drum on the one and the three, snare drum on the two and the four always. But now we're going to change that up. So now we're going to put an extra snare drum on the two uh, so two e and uh, and we're gonna put extra uh, kick drum on three and. So we have a kick drum anyone, three, and it's gonna sound like this. If you wanna count along, try and count along. I'll count out loud so you can understand where the drums are coming. One E and a two E and a three and four E and a one E and a two E and a three and four E and a one E and a two E and a three and four E and a. All along, right hand still doing the same. One. And two and three and four and kick drum still on the one and three snare drum still on the two and four basic beat that is the basic beat you come to but speaking of it in subdivisions and I wanted to speak today about subdivisions just because it's the basis of everything in drums it's understanding where something goes you can play something you can see them guys blazing around and doing that they will understand what subdivision they're playing in they will understand where that note goes in relation to the bar and the time, otherwise you get lost and you just don't know what you're playing. You don't need to read music to know this, it's just understanding that a 16th note is 16th notes in a bar. Same thing, same principles, really good basic stuff to learn. So the exercise I did at the beginning, really good exercise. Play it as slow as possible. If you can get that down to like 30 BPM, then that's amazing. Just try, try that because it's hard, really hard. Playing a groove at 30 BPM, really, really difficult, um, but yeah. So like I said, that groove I just played, we're adding an extra 16th note on the snare drum, we're adding another 8th note on the kick drum halfway through, and then the sky's the limit within them three subdivisions. Obviously there's more and more I can teach you. In. So I'm gonna play you out now. Um, this is all using 16th notes, 8th notes, and quarter notes. Everything's the same. I'm just adding in more bass drums and more snare drums. And if you see it, like I'll have on screen, if you had seen the note placements, then you can really understand where things are lining up and things are happening. So there you go. Thanks for watching. <laughs>